I tell you what I really believe. God has not given to me one thing that he'll not give to any one of you young people in this place if you'll pay the price. I'm not special to him. There is a one thing that he's done for me that he'll not do for you. There isn't a young man, there isn't a young woman in this assembly this morning. But what God will use you in exactly the same way. He'll give to you absolutely everything that he's given to me. You'll pay the price. I would lie if I would to tell you the price is cheap. Everybody's out for a bargain these days, but God has no bargains. Young people, I would lie to you. If I were to tell you that it comes cheap, You see me walk out of there on stage and all you see is the glamour of it. And it looks so glamorous. There's a price. And it depends on what you want most. Just face facts. We're living in a generation where this generation doesn't want to face facts. I'm talking to young people who do not want to face facts. Sometimes I think it's the hardest thing in the world to get young people these days to face facts. But when you're dealing with the spiritual, it's the most important thing in the world. And you've got to face the truth and face facts. And you walk out on that stage. And I know what David meant when he said, Take not of thy Holy Spirit from me. I probably know better than anyone else in this place what he meant and how he felt when he cried out, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I'm not afraid of Satan. I can use the same weapon on Satan that Jesus used. It is written. I can face Satan. I can face all the forces of hell and use the same weapon on him that Jesus did. I fear no man. But one fear. Lest I grieve the Holy Spirit. Lest this anointing shall leave. You don't know. Young people, you don't know. In this ministry, you only see the glamour. In this ministry, yesterday, the thousands in this arena only saw the miracles. And they saw the glory. But very few of them could see the price that was paid before those miracles took place. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. 
he can take everything that I've got. He can strip me of everything I've got. Leave me but the clothing to cover my body. Leave me but the shoes on my feet. And I'm willing to go out there and live on bread and water the rest of my life. So help me, God. I'll preach it if I have to preach it from the street corner. But take not thy Holy Spirit from me. If I knew the Holy Spirit had been grieved, I would never, if I knew the Holy Ghost had departed from me, I would never again walk out on the stage. I would never go through the form. I would never make a pretense of the thing. For in that hour, I would be the most ordinary person that ever lived. And nothing would happen. You can say the same words. You can go through the same form. You can do the same thing. But the secret of power is the Holy Ghost. Millions can envy you. You're probably the envy of more young people than you can possibly realize. But there's still something more. It's more than the teaching. It's something that's personal. Sitting there. I'll ask one question. What? do you want most in life that has to come first? Face facts, face yourself. Look yourself directly in the face. Maybe you don't desire what I've been talking about. Maybe that isn't your desire at all. Maybe it isn't. other things in life that you want more, that you feel are more desirable. I couldn't live if I had anything less than I had. I couldn't live. I wouldn't want to live. That fellowship that Paul was talking about in that communion with the Holy Spirit. I couldn't live without it. I couldn't. I couldn't. Everything else is so worthless. Nothing else really matters. But maybe you don't want it. Maybe you don't want the best that God has for you. But there are other things that are more important to you. But oh, when once you've tasted, when once you've experienced, when once You've known what it was like to have the Holy Spirit take your body. You ask me why I am not weary in body after five hours. Why I am as refreshed as though I'd had five hours of rest. 
it's because Catherine Kuhlman hasn't done it. I haven't done anything. I've only stood there and I've lost the Holy Ghost do it. I love it. I love it. I have been a great spectator, really. It's been my privilege to be a spectator to see what the Holy Spirit was doing. 